And we're back. Hey, it's your boy Greg. Today is part two of a series that we're doing on sharpening SG2 or R2 steel. Um, in case you did not see last week's video, I will put a link in the in the video up here. Maybe even put another one in the description. Um, all the things that we're going to be using today will also be in the description. So today we're going to be sharpening 180 millimeter Damascus. R2 SG2 Bunka by Camo. It has a um, custom handle by Pike Cutlery. I sharpened last week a 270 millimeter uh, Tashimi finish Sujihiki 50 50 bevel. This was by um, Kato. And this is a longer knife, but yet it feels lighter. It's got a thicker spine. It just has significantly more weight as if this knife feels more solid. It has a Damascus finish, so I do not know what is um, intertwined with it, and that might be giving it the extra weight. Last week I noted that on the other knife, um, I started off with just enough pressure from my hand and it was doing nothing. So I ended up having to put more weight on it. So today we're gonna see if we can get this done a little faster. Um, by starting with a little more pressure. So I noted that I think it took a little bit longer. It has uh, a Hardwell Rockness of an average 64. Some people do it a little bit less, but on the average, if you're getting an R2 or SG2, it's gonna be a Hardwell Rockness, a Rockwell Hardness of 64. Um, so R2 SG2, just to recap, is in the powdered steel, super steel category. Um, there are other super steels, like powdered steels, um, ZDP-189. Um, I think there's, I'm going to say it wrong, Tara, don't be mad. Uh, BD-1N, I believe, is the name of the series. So, And that is a steel that is used by Perfect Edge Cutlery for their line of knives. Um, and just so you know, we're going to be giving away a knife from Perfect Edge Cutlery made for that company using BD-1N powdered steel. So we're excited to be getting ready to do that for you guys, and you'll um, get a chance to own one for yourself. So today, the stones that we're going to be using are going to be everything that you can purchase um, yourself. These are all going to be synthetic stones. So we're going to start with the 1000K Sahiro Dubato. It is the more professional stone. It's, you spend a little more money. It's big. It's wide. It was very helpful in the Suji in the Suji Hiki because it has more surface area. Um, to like a disclaimer is that these stones were already flattened prior to the last video. Polishers use stones that are unflattened. This is not a knife polishing series. This is a knife sharpening series using this type of steel just to see, you know, how much more work it would be. Okay. So ZDP 189 being the hardest of all steels, I heard that that was really, um, a, like a lot of work if you're going to do it by hand. I do not own anything that ZDP-189. It is on the list of things to own one day. Unfortunately, I have the uh, bad news of having to dull this knife. This knife does not need to be sharpened. Um, so to prove it, we will just show you that, um, yeah, it's like, why the hell am I messing up this beautiful knife on purpose, but I'm doing it for you. So just like the last episode, um, I have this Amakusa natural stone that I'm going to be dulling the knife with. So let's do 20 passes and see what happens. So one of the things I'm doing is I'm laying it and rocking it slightly because there is a belly to make sure that I get it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Now, this knife was pretty sharp, so let's see if that even did anything. So we were, that hurt my ears. Oh my gosh. We were barely able to do like a slide. Okay. 
<coughs> just okay. Okay, it's beautiful now. It's shit. We did not chip the knife. That is so good. Um, wow, it is too beautiful. Um, so let's go ahead and start this. So this knife has a flatter profile. It does have a slightly round belly. Um, does that mean I'm going to be doing this curving? Uh, not so much. Um, so I'm going to uh, create my angle. Again, I'm going to be making a different video on just finding the angle. It is something I've done naturally. Um, these, I, I use my knives properly. I don't cut through frozen food and I'm not working around bone. I have a knife for boning. And so that's a thicker knife and it's kind of made for it. So I typically go 15 degrees. I don't uh, need to be thinner than that. If you go thinner, you might make it sharper, but you can ruin the life of your knife. Um, so just another quick point I just thought popped in my head in case you didn't see last week's episode. So the question comes up, you know, is R2 or SG2 steel different? I've heard it was the same. So a company called Cabelco Steel Company makes R2 steel. They sell it, sell it to different people to be used as that, whether they're working on tools or knives. Um, when Takafu Knife Village gets it, the Takafu Steel Company rebrands it as SG2 or Super Gold 2 steel. It's the same steel. Okay? So, for those of you who wanted to know, it was the same. It is. So, we are going to... Um, I, I personally, when I grip, I have a finger underneath. I have a thumb on top. And I put my finger down the spine. Some people use a total pinch grip. I'm a finger down the spine person. So, uh, the Sahiro stones do not need to be soaked if they're to splash and go. But I will tell you, they do need to be in the water for like five minutes. I mean, it's not really like a soaking. But they are very sticky if they're um, not in water for like a minute. I have... The uh, Naniwa Professional Combo Stone 3000, 6000, so getting in water. And that's going to be our lineup today. We're going to do a 1000, a 3000. Then we've got a 6000 on the other side, an 8000. And uh, so let's get to it. So I am going to curve the knife slightly and move it back and forth with my finger on the tip. I'm pressing a little harder today. Um, if you do a longer stroke, you'll keep your stone more even, and you'll have less passes. Um, so, moving over to this side. Now, you can see that metal is definitely coming off. I think people forget that the stone itself has abrasives that are harder than the knife. And that's the point of using the stone. Um, over time, you are releasing some of the um, particles that are the abrasive. And so the stone does wear away, and at the same time, um, this metal buildup is coming off the knife. What's a nice feedback for me is that it's everywhere, which tells me I'm using all of the stone. So let's go ahead and feel. Okay, wow. So for you guys who watched me do that one, I had work to do on that one. I pressed a little harder today. The bevel popped up so fast <clears throat> on this. So what does that mean? Is this knife heated to a different heat treatment? The two places that I noticed that were missing were the toe and the heel. Guys, that was super fast. I don't even know what to tell you. Does that tell me that these are... Um, I mean, of course, I went right to pressure this time.
That was incredibly fast. Um, the two contradict each other completely. I was so never thought that that was done. That's, that's done. That is so done. I mean, that was incredibly fast. Um, the mud on this was great. It happened so fast. So this Nagura is Nagura, Nagura, however you want to pronounce it. Um, we just want to clean this up real quick. For those of you who are new to stones, and you're keeping your stones flat this helps it helps to get all the load out of the, the stones but make sure you spend a moment and kind of go at an angle on your edges um you don't really want the stone to get a little high on the edges and then scratch the flat area of the knife All right. So I got any of the abrasive off the left. Okay, wow, this is happening so quick. If all knives sharpen this fast, I'd be rich. Again, using the full length of the stone really helps. This really sharpened as fast as super blue. Just a little bit on the heel. Please try to take the time. If you're working with a knife that does not have a bolster, you should be able to get the edge. Use the entire stone. You can see that these stones, this particular stone has lasted me for seven years. pretty good now once we move to this 3000 we're already polishing we did all the sharpening on the 1k so if you guys are on a budget the 1000 stone is enough to get your knife sharp plenty and plenty sharp enough to be working in restaurant on a commercial level the 3000 helps to take the bevel you can see there's plenty of metal coming off on the stone I enjoyed this knife very much. 180 millimeter is just such a great size for anyone's hands. Okay, so we're gonna go to the other side.
you'll notice but I tend to. So first off, you'll notice I flip the knife over. Some people keep the knife in the same hand and they go this, this way or in back and forth. So I flipped it over and you'll notice I tend to not use the spine. Like I tend to kind of do more of a pinch grip on the side. Yeah, amazing. Okay, so we're going to go over. Let's get it secure. Okay, let's clean it up a little bit. So this stone had a lot of load on it from the last knife. And at 6,000, um, it's not cutting anymore, it's polishing. So we really want it to be like free of debris and material. So I don't know if you guys notice, I actually get the tip close to the edge here. and use the entire stone. And, and you guys don't want this humongous bevel. You want a micro bevel. You want to just tell that the stone is pushing metal up. So I'm doing really small movements with my fingers. I apologize. I that pause there. Okay. So we are going to go to this stone bridge right now. So we're really trying to get the burr off. You can see how fast the metal is coming off on this stone. I might have just cut myself that fast. Yep, just like that it can happen folks. So we know we got the heel sharp um, and I'm not going to stop rolling just for that. So let's
guys, if you've sharpened a knife, you've cut yourself. So if any of you are freaking out that I'm not handling it, I will handle it in a minute. Um, so if you find value in these videos, please like this video, subscribe to the channel. That really helps to support us. Um, please click the notifications button because if you're not being notified, what's the point of really su subscribing? Okay. And just like that, would I normally strop? Yes. Do I need to strop? I don't know. It sounds pretty good. So, it's a cut. It did happen, folks. Don't try this at home unless you're willing to risk it. So, the edge of the knife came out amazing. We did it really fast. So, what is my final... Um, my final conclusion on this, I was pressing more helps. Um, the Damascus did not slow me down. Uh, technique got it done rapidly. The stones are something you can buy. The Sahiro stone, this is an 8K, their standard Sahiro. It's their version of a Snow White. It's not a true Snow White, but it's their version of a Snow White. Um, the 1000 Dubato, they make a normal standard 1000. You don't have to go to Dubato. The big one is so nice. I like spending the extra money if you have it. Um, the Nagura came with it. The 8K had its own. So that's nice. The nice thing that Sahira provides is, is that. Um, all of the stones were flattened prior to use using an Atoma 400. Um, we'll do a video just on flattening and lapping, but, um, because I was sharpening the knives and I wanted to make sure I didn't scratch up the middle of the knife. I made sure the knife was flat. So we did a 1000, which for the most knives that are just like standard dull, you're going to start with a one K you're not going to go lower to a, a 500 or a 400, or, I mean, you could start with an 800, but. You don't need a 500 or 400 or 220 or something in the hundreds. You don't need that unless the knife is extremely dull. If you're a chef doing normal weekly use and at home chef doing normal weekly use and you want to sharpen your knives once a week, 1K uh, will put a great edge. I did not use a honing rod. Obviously, um, these are very hard and a honing rod can be so hard that it actually chipped the knife. So uh, if you maintain your knives like this, it doesn't have to take that long. The final conclusion is you're going to have to figure it out for yourself. I hate to say it on the R2. This one was done super fast. If I wasn't talking, it would have been done lightning fast, faster than normal. This one took longer, but I had to figure it out. Um, super happy with both. If you want to see the edge on that one from last week, the knife looks amazing. I'm excited to use it. So, uh, and there you go. You can see the extent of the cut. Just like that, boom, knives are dangerous. Yes, that's why there's no children allowed on the channel. Um, we know that when it comes to owning knives. I appreciate you guys listening, rambling on. All the, everything will be links in the description. Thanks for watching the channel. Um, so uh, something we have going on soon, uh, maybe this weekend, I don't know, but it'll be the knife giveaway. The other thing is uh, I'm going to be doing different strops. So I have a lot of strops and I've got one more being mailed to me. So then um, we'll give a comparison. I'm going to do a video on stropping progressions, different strops to use in a row, as well as some compounds, abrasives, all 0.5 microns from three names you know and one you might not, to give a good comparison of how they work, what they do, how they work in comparison to each other. Um, some interviews coming up. We're going to tour a knife store. Uh, I might be going to, uh, not, I won't call that a forge, but a, a, a bladesmith's 
workshop. So a lot of things going on. Appreciate you so much. God bless. I'm wishing you never a dull moment. Thank you.